What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I promised you guys a couple videos ago that I was going to show you uh, some of the footage that we filmed of the S13 NA beam swap. So today we're going to go ahead and uh, show you guys that footage. Uh, but before we get into that, let's see what we're doing at the shop today. So right now we got Steve here working on the XJ220 engine. I'm going to have videos on that really soon. Uh, right now he's putting the, the valve cover Valve on. cover gaskets back on. So definitely an interesting engine and uh, excited to show that to you guys. Meanwhile, Martin is setting up an S chassis diff. So this is for a buddy of his and he is doing a setup on a 1.5 way diff. So pretty cool. So that's what we got going on at the shop today. And uh, for this S13 uh, beam swap, I don't believe I filmed the actual uh, original engine coming out, but it had uh, an early single cam KA engine. Uh, but I believe we're going to be skipping right on to Martin doing his first mock-up on the new Beams engine. So hopefully you guys enjoy. That uh, clip of Martin putting the engine in, he actually took the engine back out uh, because he made the decision that he was going to go ahead and cut the core support off and make it uh, bolt on, bolt off instead of just being, you know, welded to the car. Um, the reason that he did this is you can see here to make this, you know, easier to work on. You can get the engine in and out. So he's going to be adding uh, tabs that are welded to here and have a nut here so you can bolt this piece on and off the car and make it much easier to take the engine in and out. Um, you don't have to do this to make this engine fit in this car. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier. You can see how high that core support is. You know, so you gotta like angle the engine and drop it in. So uh, without that, you can just slide the engine right in and uh, works really good. And uh, while you're at it, you can go ahead and uh, weld here. You can see that this bracket here is notorious for cracking and breaking off. And this is actually what holds the front bumper on on both sides. So Martin went ahead and uh, Put a little bit of extra weld there, made that just a little bit stronger. And uh, you know, some of these upgrades you can do while you're uh, doing these modifications to mount your uh, bolt-on oh, core support. So you were just telling me about doing the hammering on this before you put the engine in. So why is it that you did that? Yeah, my tip uh, for doing that is because um, you know when you pull the old engine out and the wiring and the ECU out, um, the fact that everything you know that it's safe to hammer here because usually um, on the 240 ECU sits right behind this area. So while you do, you know, you take the original engine out and the ECU out, it is the perfect time for you to hammer and conform your fender wall uh, to the angle kit that you're putting on. And I like spraying black um, just with the spray paint and you really got to kind of set up the car. I mean, first you, I hammer it and then you spray the black paint and then you set up, you know, set up, set up the car, do an alignment, drive it around, do some figure eights in the parking lot. And then you're going to see some areas that you missed. So painting it black really shows you what you did and what you didn't do. And um, so you're going to want to do that a couple times until nothing, absolutely nothing rubs and um, um, hits the wheel. You can see that there's still a bit of room, if I come over here, between the fender wall here and the tire, but we don't actually have, as you can see, the super scrub enabler on. So when you add a lot of scrub, like we do for the Kansai Flick kit specifically, the wheel actually takes a different path. And instead of just turning on its axis, it will actually move the entire wheel forward and backwards in the wheel well. And so you want to create more space than, you know, you would possibly think is necessary and is uh, make sure you have lots of room for the scrub to move. Make sure this wheel doesn't contact the fender wall. So 
So Martin finished the mock-up for the Beams engine, and uh, him and I got that out and put it over here. And now Martin is getting this car prepped for paint. So we're gonna be painting this engine bay. Uh, it's gonna be painted white to match the rest of the car. Uh, you can see it's originally was in red, uh, but Martin is currently doing some prep work. And uh, what was the first step in getting this thing prepped for paint? Well, when you paint an engine bay, more stuff you take off, better it's gonna come out. You can see and that over here, he cut off some uh, brackets as well that we used yep. to be over there, so yeah, that's yeah. You know, less stuff but to paint there. But the main thing was the factory harness wrapped around from this end to the other end, and it was very much painful to take it off, but the paint job is gonna end up coming out great because we don't have to have that there while we paint. And another tip is to use red Scotch-Brite. Um, I think this is equivalent to somewhere around 220 and 320 in sandpaper world. Uh, but it's really nice stuff. You can just use your hand and uh, get into these uh, awkward shapes really well with this. And obviously I'm gonna spray some primer over you know, the bare metal that's showing. There's a, quite a bit of rust uh, before from the brake fluid being leaked down. Um, so we're gonna primer there, but for the most part, you can just use this stuff to scuff it up and it's pretty much ready to paint over that, so. So Martin's gonna be spraying some primer, like he said, on this exposed metal. So a lot of this, you sand it off to get through the, the rust that was on there from the brake fluid. And uh, the rest of this red that's here that's you know, still in one piece, like he said, that once he sanded it and created some of that you know, rougher surface, you can just go ahead and spray the actual white paint over that. Oh, you can see it. Some of the black oil stain that wouldn't come out just by sanding by putting water and degreaser in the Scotch-Brite pad, you can really get all the grease out. Yesterday, when I was sanding this, it wouldn't come out. Yeah, nothing. Because they were so embedded. Totally embedded in the paint. Yeah. So you need to show people that, like, hey, Martin sets this car up for paint. Uh, we are going to be taking, you know, the top of the shock tower part off so that he can paint around where these bolts go, you know, stuff like that. But it doesn't need to be perfect, so we can just cover the subframe instead of taking the entire subframe and suspension off. And uh, we'll still have a car that looks really good. So, of course, Martin is going to be painting, you know, this red backing for the actual lights. Uh, you know, you got to match that to the, the rest of the engine bay because. You will see it, not as clearly, but it will be there. So go ahead and mask these up. So Martin has finished up what he calls the pre-mask. Uh, he's masked most of the essential things. Um, you, know, you can see most of the holes to the firewall are masked up. Most of the most important stuff is masked up. There is still some more stuff that he will mask in the morning before we actually do paint, you know, and make sure he covers the whole back half of the car, all that kind of stuff. Um, but for now, this is, you know, a really good starting point and almost prep for this thing to paint. The next day. So it's paint day. Uh, we got Martin behind me. Martin is doing the last little bit of prep on this, uh, this S chassis engine bay you guys can see here. And uh, we've got just a little bit more to go. 
uh, before we're going to be ready for paint. So Martin's got the, you know, separated uh, cross brace here on the front. The engine bay is pretty much masked up and prepped. We can see he's got the suspension out so he can paint around these holes real nice. And then uh, last thing, we're going to mask the, the back half of the car and uh, we'll be good to go. Brandon's going to be in our video. Oh, like right here. Like it stops right here. This is the final section here. We got Brandon doing some work here. Martin's yeah. buddy from Bath. time now. Martin's got the entire car prepped and ready to go. Got it masked up. Martin's just doing a couple of quick test sprays. Getting his, uh, his spray gun working good. So the paint that Martin is using here that he's spraying on is actually a urethane single stage paint. It's a pretty durable paint, good for the engine bay, and it is a uh, alpine white to match the rest of the car. And uh, the biggest reason that you want to use a single stage, you know, over a multi-stage for this kind of job is that it just makes it a lot easier. You know, you only have to do one coat versus, you know, multiple coats of multiple different layers. You know, first your paint, then your clear. You're gonna have a lot more chances for runs. Um, you know, the biggest thing about this paint job uh, that Martin wants to you know, stress is that this is very similar to like a backyard paint job that you would do, you know, at your house. This is not like a professional job. You can see we clearly don't have a booth. And, uh, you know, the preparation work that you're gonna do is a lot different if you have a paint booth or you're painting the entire body of a car. You know, it's a very different process. got most of the paint done. You guys can see this is the light. This is the cross brace here. And then the main engine bay here. And it's so wide I can't even get the thing to balance. There we go. Looks really nice. We're gonna have to let that dry up and uh, for a little bit and then we'll put the suspension back on enough that we can roll it, roll it inside and let it dry over the weekend. And uh, should be good to go to put the engine back in early next week. <laughs> 